Hey everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks. And if you're wondering why I've got such a big cheesy grin on my face, that's because I had the pleasure of playtesting Wargaming's upcoming Tier 10 Italian Auto Reloading Heavy Tank with the new compensation mechanic if you have to fire a shell early inside an auto reloader. Today I'm going to be letting you know everything that I've managed to find out in my playtesting of the Rhinoceronte so you can find out what you have to look forward to with the Italian Auto Reloading Heavy Tank branch coming in the next few months. So firstly, before I let this vehicle loose on the battlefield, I want to clarify one thing. This is a very early look at the vehicle. None of the statistics that I'm going to be showing you are final. As you can see with the overlay, everything is subject to change and this tank is clearly in development. Nevertheless, a massive thank you to Wargaming for effectively fabricating a random battle environment so that I could playtest the vehicle and share my initial experiences with you. So firstly, what is actually special about the Italian auto reloading heavy tanks? Because we already have auto loading medium tanks in the game. The way that an auto loader works is it loads the shells one by one by one and it can fire them all in quick succession just like a regular auto loader inside World of Tanks. What makes the Italian auto-loading heavy tanks different is they actually have a compensation to reload if you have to fire early because as everyone will know if you have to fire early in an Italian auto-reloading medium tank or if you're lucky enough to have the IS-3A for example that it breaks all of your reload progress of the shell. So to break down this mechanic, imagine that you're playing an Italian medium tank in the game and you've got two rounds loaded and you're slowly but surely reloading your third shell in the tank. Now, if it takes 15 seconds to be able to reload and you fire just before the shell is actually finished reloading, not only are you going to lose all of the progress that you made towards a third shell, but you're also going to lose the second shell as well, leaving yourself with only one shell inside the tank. How However, let's imagine that you're playing the new Italian auto reloading heavy tanks and that E100 Yang Panzer comes around the corner just before your shell has finished reloading and you need to finish him off. Well then, if you fire, you lose all of the progress of the shell, you lose the previous shell as well. However, you're going to get back some of the reload that you lost in the form of a reduced reload of the second shell. So effectively, your second shell might start reloading from halfway, for example. And while everything is subject to change, let me break down what I was able to understand from Wargaming about the compensation mechanic. And that is that it doesn't include the intraclip reload, which for the Rhinoceronte is four seconds, and it won't include the last two seconds, as this is a grace period where you're kind of meant to fire, and why would you fire anyway in the last two seconds and not just wait for that little bit of extra time Time to be able to get the full shell loaded in the tank. So let's imagine that you're dealing with that Yank Panzer E100 again, but you have to absolutely fire two seconds before the shell is actually reloaded. Well, how much compensation will you get? Well, that will be minus the intraclip reload, minus the last two seconds of the reload because you fired within it. And for this example, where the reload of the total shell would have been 15 seconds, you won't get the intraclip, you won't get the two seconds of the final, leaving you with nine seconds total, and you get half of this back as compensation for your next reload, which means that accordingly, you're gonna shave four and a half seconds off. And while this clearly isn't nearly as good as waiting that extra couple of seconds, it definitely will make a difference, especially for a heavy tank where you can't really control the engagement in your favor. All right, this is the second cheesy grin of this video. I, I could not contain my excitement of being able to play the new tier 10 Italian auto reloading heavy tank and once again I want to clarify this is completely inside development and a massive thank you to you Wargaming for letting me have an early sneak peek at it. So let me explain the testing situation. You might ask is this a super test? No it's not a super test. What this is is that Wargaming got the players that usually would be involved in the super test and then got community contributors like myself who were lucky enough to be able to participate in this battle to be able to play the Rhinoceronte with them. And so as you can see, the kind of tanks that we're playing with and against are a real world situation. Now you might be saying, were the super test players inside this not super test actually trying to, to beat you and play very well? Yes, yes they were. In fact, a few of them actually played um, way better than I thought they would do and they were completely kicking my butt. So I'd like to say a massive thank you to all of the super testers involved for playing properly, giving it a good go, so I could actually have a real good look at what the Rhinoceronte was capable of. Okay, so this vehicle. What is special about the Rhinoceronte? Well, firstly, I want to show you. Look at that gun coming through the top of the tank. It, you can actually see how the vehicle is able to get so much gun depression and how it's also able to get elevation. This turret is absolutely funky. It really is. So this vehicle has a three-round 
100 and what? It's, it's 127 millimeter auto reloader, which actually packs 490 damage a shot. So Kranvang, move over. T57 Heavy, 50B, all of those vehicles move over. The Rhinoceronte is here with its big boy alpha damage. Now, you might notice that the reload on this vehicle is exceptionally long. The deeper that you go into the magazine, just like an Italian medium tank, the longer that you're going to have to spend. Okay, so this is an amazing moment here. It's going to be my first time actually firing early. And look how the actual reload of the third shell was better than the reload of the second shell would be. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, look right in the middle of the screen and you can see the numbers. I know it's not in the best of fonts, but you don't want that to be distracting you from the combat. Also, listen for the sounds. Wargaming have put sounds in so it lets you know. Is it going to do sounds? There's the beep. So the beep is where it has actually got that two seconds grace period at the end where if you're going to fire, you should fire now or you shouldn't fire at all so you actually save the entire reload. There's the beeps going on again. And so they're friendly. I really like the UI. Wargaming, I, I know I've told you already, but the one thing that I would really love is to have like an extra beep after that two second grace window so you know when the shell has actually fully reloaded into the tank. So this vehicle, it's all about hull down. This vehicle, it's all about big boy alpha damage and it does feel like a heavy in the way that it trundles around is this thing going to have from my interpretation the way that the the inc incredible armor that you would have on some of your say soviet heavy tanks no in many situations actually you could shoot down on the upper hull and it wasn't so good but if you actually hide that lower plate and you use some of the fantastic gun depression the vehicle has yeah it did feel very decent the weaknesses of the tank, a lot like the Italian auto-reloading medium tanks, so far feel as if its damage per minute is pretty bad. And its gun handling, it's not the worst thing I've ever played with, but as you would expect for something that hits for 490, the equivalent of a gun on an IS-7, you'd expect it to be not the best. All right, so now this is really where I want to, to focus up. This is the highlight of the video right now. How to use the Italian auto-reloading heavy tank in a situation like this. Well, of course, we can fire like a regular tank. We can also then now engage like an auto loader. You'll see that I'm not firing, I'm not firing, I'm not firing, I'm not firing. I'm trying to get the extra shell. But also, by holding the shell as long as possible, I'm saving extra time. And it'd be better than actually just firing early and then losing the intra-click reload. And so you'll notice that we actually just got the second shell back in fairly quickly because of the compensation mechanic. So I want to try and wait for as long as I can. Of course, ideally, what would be better to do would be to be able to wait the entire time. So it's not as if you should just fire in that last two second period. You definitely should let the shell fully reload if you can. And you should play it like an Italian auto-loading, auto-reloading medium tank if you want to absolutely maximize the damage per minute of the vehicle. But for example, against the 50B turret, we had to fire early because he was about to get round the corner. And so that allowed us to actually fight against an autoloader that usually we would have to hide back and wait for a long time to be able to reload and they would be able to have the engagement against us to actually be a little bit more aggressive. So you'll see that I'm still waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting to maximize my DPM because now I've got an entire extra shell loaded which if we'd fired early, we wouldn't have had that even though the reload would have been reduced because we've got an object 140 above us. And so it's very important that we're still maximizing the damage per minute that the vehicle has and perfect timing. Now we're going to be able to put a clean one in here to the object 140. And I'm thinking, should I fire the third one as well? Yeah, why not? A kill is a kill. Why should I have to reload in this situation? I'll just come up, I'll fire, I'll secure the kill. And then you'll see that even though we're stunned, we actually got some reload compensation for the third shell. And when the med kit... Hopefully, well, it's not going to come back off cooldown, but you'll see that the reload gets reduced. One thing that I, I have actually thought about right now is that the, the compensation that you get is actually going to be hmm, kind of better if you were to have, if you were to be stunned or you were to have like an incredibly bad crew or you weren't able to min-max the tank like you see me doing here with using spaghetti on the vehicle, for example. And that would mean that, in theory, the better players... They would have obviously a significantly reduced reload anyway, but the better players with the better crews, or shall I say, hmm, that doesn't really go hand in hand, does it? What I'm trying to say is that if you've got a really, really good reload, then the compensation would be less significant than if you had an absolutely awful reload, like if you were Amaranked, for example. It would make a much bigger difference. All right, so 4,300 damage here, three kills, and that was just the perfect environment there. You've got to see all of the strengths of playing an auto reloader, but also an auto reloader with the new compensation mechanic on the Italian heavy tanks. 
So I asked Wargaming, and uh, actually it might have been one of the other contributors, somebody asked Wargaming the developers that why would the Italian medium tanks not have this mechanic as well? And their answer, and also things that I would like to add to the discussion, is that if you were to give this to the Italian medium tanks, then you would have to make adjustments to their other statistics. It'd be hard to be able to balance around it, because undoubtedly it would just be a flat-out buff to the Italian auto-reloading medium tanks. So by Wargaming making this a feature exclusive for the heavy tanks, it allows them to change the statistics of the Italian auto-reloading heavy tanks in a different way to the medium tanks, which makes complete sense. Also, it's far more important to have this kind of compensation mechanic on a heavy tank than a medium tank. And the reason for that is that, of course, a medium tank with its increased mobility is kind of more able to control the engagement than a heavy tank is able to. But oh, I can tell you, I don't get bored of doing 490 alpha damage bombs like that in a heavy tank. And while sure, the intraclip reload of 4 seconds definitely feels very significant for this vehicle and it hinders this tank from being a bursty damage dealer like you would be in a Krenvang or alternatively in a T57 Heavy. Four seconds doesn't feel so bad when you're hitting 490 alpha damage shells. And while I've certainly picked the most interesting game that I had on the test server, and not all of my games went this well. In fact, there were quite a few times when I, I got overconfident and I got my butt whooped by the enemy team. This one, especially with that frenetic engagement against the Batchat, the 50B, the Rhinoceronte, and then the Object 140, really showed you what you can do with the new Italian auto-reloading heavy tanks and their compensation mechanic. It definitely feels a lot more convenient to play an auto-reloader. And so if you absolutely hated playing the Italian medium tanks because you just felt that you wanted to fire early or you weren't able to be able to predict the situation to adjust the way that you play to give yourself that extra time, which is what the better players would be doing, then these new, more friendly Italian auto-reloading heavy tanks could certainly be more interesting for the community. And so all in all, what do I think about the Rhinoceronte and what do I think about the Italian auto-reloading heavy mechanic? Well, remember, this is not a tank review. This is not even a tank preview. This is a special test server that Wargaming set up and they were the super testers were very generous to be able to participate in it, to be able to give me an idea of how this vehicle could perform, but more importantly, the how the auto-reloading compensation mechanic works out, whether it actually has any value, and do these tanks have their own identity? So for me, yes, the Italian auto-reloaders with the compensation mechanic do feel different to the medium tanks, and they do feel different to all of the other auto-loading heavies out there. I quite often get frustrated playing a Kranfang, more frustrated playing a T57 Heavy or an AMX 50B at just needing that one extra shell to be able to finish off that low roll. And so to be able to have an auto reloader on a heavy tank does make it very much more convenient to be able to fight in a close quarters combat situation. And this will allow the tank to be able to dictate the pace against when you want to fire. Do you want to just start to whittle down your opponents? And because of the armor layout that the Rhinoceronte has, and it's not the most heavily armored heavy tank you're ever going to play in your life, but it has enough armor to be no pushover as well. Don't expect this thing to be as easy to deal with as an AMX 50B turret, and also not as easy to deal with as a Kranvang hull, if it exposes more than its turret which is meant to do but is it going to be some kind of new all-purpose kill them all kind of heavy tank i think that might be pushing it a little bit so what do i think about the italian auto reloading heavy tank compensation mechanic all in all it it, it feels quite intuitive with the way that wargaming have presented it in the game and while it definitely makes a difference and prevents your dpm from ever getting so bad that you're going to just be absolutely useless at the moment, the Rhinoceronte still has a pretty poor overall damage per minute. And realistically, would I rather have this mechanic, or would I rather that they just shaved a few seconds off the, the reload altogether? Well, probably if they just shaved the reload off altogether, this vehicle would be better than it would be if it had a longer reload, but also had the auto-reloading compensation. And a final point should be made at how complicated is, is it going to be to try and predict how many shells your opponent has when the reload is changing depending on when they actually fire during the auto-reloading? It's going to be absolutely bizarre. So for all of you uh, 300 IQ mega mines out there trying to 
quantify how many shells the rhinoceronte that you're playing against has got left inside his tank so you could go after him. Well, good luck to you. So to conclude, I really enjoyed my time with the rhinoceronte. I love new tanks. I love new mechanics going into the game. And this one feels different enough that I can't wait to be able to get my hands on it and test it out on the battlefield to really see what it's capable of. Once again, I want to give a massive thank you to you Wargaming and all of the super testers and all of just the employees that spent their time to be able to organize this and for letting me get into a position where I could test this tank. I very much appreciate it. I hope that the feedback I provided was useful and I hope that I was able to break this all down for the community. But once again, community, I want all of you to remember that this is in development Nothing that you see as final. Wargaming might decide to change everything or anything. But from what I've seen so far, it's looking like these things are really something to look forward to over this winter period. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it. I really hope this video was useful or you just enjoyed it. If it was, give it a thumbs up. But if you absolutely hated it, give it a thumbs down. Let me know in the comments what you think about the Italian auto-reloading heavy tanks. Do you think that these things look absolutely incredible? Do you think that they look absolutely awful? What do you think about the compensation mechanic? Do you think it is useful? Or do you think, well, why wouldn't you just wait the couple of extra seconds to be able to get the shell in, right? Well, as I showed in the gameplay, you, some, sometimes you clearly can't. And it's actually a decision of, do I want to damage that tank or do I not and as always thank you so much for watching you've been epic and and stay tuned to the channel as you know as soon as I manage to get my hands on more of these vehicles oh, you know where to come